Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Slider Cut Shaping Up Culture, episode five. Today's subject matter is, you are always in an interview. What does this mean? You're always in an interview, always in an interview. It means that every interaction you have is an interview. You are interviewing someone or someone's always interviewing you, whether you know it or not. You could be on a train and acting the fool. Somebody in there is, in, not even somebody, everybody in there is interviewing you. Because if you end up in a situation where that person needs your services, they're going to look back and remember what you were doing on the train that day and say, hmm, actually, I don't really like that person's personality or attitude because they were doing this. Like, everyone must know this story of there was a man on the way to a job interview. He was running a little bit late or time was, time was tight and somebody cut him up or somebody was driving slow in front of him. So... He got in front of the person or beside the person and started cussing and swearing and dissing the person for his reckless driving. Got to the job interview and who was the person giving him the interview? The person he was cussing and swearing at. The whole point is you're always in an interview. It's not good enough to become that person in the right situations. We need to, we need to become that person full stop in everyday life. In saying this, what does it mean? How do we take on this attitude of always being in an interview? How should we carry ourselves then? Well. As I said earlier, the person you believe that you should be when the right person is around should be the person you become full stop. So you cannot say, do you know what, when that person's hiring, I'll act good or I'll give a good haircut as example, or I'll give good customer service, I'll be polite. Because you never know that it might be, as example, Damon, who's actually hiring me. You know, I could easily say it's Darren, you know, and I could, Shout out to Darren, Barbara Darren. <laughs> I could easily say, yo, it's Darren and think, you know, Darren's the one who's got the opportunity for me, but Damon could be the one with the opportunity. So I'm acting like giving Darren the best customer service. I'm giving him the best haircuts and everything like that. But what I don't realise is Damon actually owns, you know, Barber Universal. <laughs> Just become that person. Give good customer service. Be polite. Give out a good product, make a good product, just become that person generally and it'll be a lot easier than trying to find the right person to act right towards. I cut J. Cole a few years ago. It's actually more of a funny story because J. Cole's barber, is, when he first came, was actually Damon and something happened where... <laughs> you know, that's another part to the story, but something happened where, let's just say they couldn't get through to Damon. Someone put a block so they couldn't get through to Damon. The way I ended up cutting J. Cole's hair was this. My sister-in-law had a friend and she was giving him just a gift and just said, you know, go get a haircut from her brother-in-law, which is obviously me. So he came, his name's Eddie. I cut his hair and Eddie wasn't, I didn't know him or anything. He just, I just gave him a haircut, gave him the service he deserved, gave him the haircut he deserved because he's a client in my chair. He came back a few months later, same thing. I gave him a haircut, gave him the service he deserved, the haircut he deserved. There was nothing, there was no ulterior motives in this. I didn't know he was anybody. I didn't know he was connected to any, anybody. I just gave him what I should be giving every customer who steps into my chair. Months later, six months later, I haven't seen him. R randomly one day, I'm in church, I get a phone call from him. He's called me a couple times, I think, or he's called me and I picked up. I've gone outside and picked up. He called me, said, yeah, J. Cole needs a haircut because they can't get through to his barber, which funny enough was Damon. <laughs> they can't get through to his barber they've messaged him so he needs a barber urgently and he's with him for some reason and he's called me now the reason why he called me is because I gave him a good service I gave him the haircut that he wanted and then later on down the line even though I never even saw myself as being in an interview with him he ended up you could say hiring me to do this job for J. Cole my point in that is you can't ever always fully determine which situations are going to come to something. A lot of times the situations that seem to be nothing that come into something. In this day and age, people need to understand even more than ever that you're always in an interview because of social media. We flood our pages with a bunch of things that we would never want someone who's interviewing us to see or hear. And people do say things like, you know, well, what I put on my personal page shouldn't really affect, you know, or reflect in, you know, in a proper interview, you know, in an actual job interview. It shouldn't really reflect, you know, their mannerisms or who they are because that's their personal page as example. 
but the world just doesn't run like that. That's an idealistic view, and the world just doesn't run like that. People say it's not fair. It's an, I didn't know somebody was watching me. You know, all these kind of things that I was just mucking about. But in this day and age, it's imperative <laughs> that you take this on board because we all do it. Like if what, and it, we all do it in everything. Whether you're dating, whether you're hiring for a job, whether you're looking for a service, whatever it is, you go onto people's social medias and you check out their profiles to see what they're like. Especially that they don't even know that you're watching them. So it's even better because I actually get to know who you kind of are when, no, when you think nobody's watching. Which doesn't really make sense because when, if you're on social media, you're putting stuff out there so that everyone can see. So to have kind of the idea that you feel no one's watching even though you're putting it out for people to see doesn't actually make sense. So with people saying it's not fair, it's just, it's just life and we all do it. So if somebody was looking to, for a boyfriend, a girlfriend or whatever it is, and you, you would look at their social media pages, you would look at their Facebook, their Instagram, their Twitter, their Snapchat, whatever else is out there to see what they're like, you know, see their history and all those kind of things there. It's the same thing with going into jobs or opportunities, whether that is you signing a big record deal or you going for a TV role or you know, you coming to fix my dreams, you know, if I know you got a social media as example, I'm going to look on these things there and see what you're like, because this is what we do, this is, this is, this is the research that we do in this day and age, so with social media being out there now, it's so important that you represent yourself in a good manner, because people especially are getting things pulled up from their history, of things which they even did when they were kids and stuff like that, and it's affecting their present and their future you are always in an interview. Whether you think somebody's watching or not, you are always in an interview. And the flip side of it is, to understand it is, you're always interviewing someone. Every interaction you have with someone, when you're talking to someone, you're interviewing them, whether you know it or not. Later on in life, if that person comes to you and needs something from you, you're going to look back at the interactions you've had with them and determine and base note and use that to determine whether you want to follow through with this person on whatever type of deal it is. And it's the same way, vice versa. So we just need to take that on board and realize you're always in interviews. So as I said in the beginning, be the person that you want to be when the right person is around. Become that person, full stop. So then you don't have to pick and choose and try and find the right person to impress. But by throwing your good seeds Every time you are, you know, by throwing your good seeds out there, just in every interaction, what you're doing is you're covering all your bases. So when the right person does come around, you don't have to think to yourself, did I miss that opportunity because I didn't act right? Or I didn't do the right thing? These pieces of advice are good both for business and life. They're good for both business and life. So it's not as just simple as only take this on when you're doing business, only take this on when you're, you know, in your personal life. It's good for everything. See your words, your attitude, your personality, your behaviour as your seeds. And every time you do one of these things, you're throwing out a seed. So make sure you're throwing out good seeds because you never know what soil they're going to land on and wherever they're going to grow. See you next week on another episode of Shaping Up Culture.